Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, Karen completely ruined my cheesecake, so I lost it on her. So I'm 19, female, and I'm a pastry chef. I love my sweets to be on point, as you can see them on pictures. Nothing less, nothing more. My mom, who's 60, female, on the other hand, keeps destroying my sweets by adding too much of everything. One time, I made a strawberry cake for my grandma's birthday, and she came over to add a ton of whipped cream to it. In the end, the cake was a total disaster. It was falling apart from too much cream, and I yelled at her at the top of my lungs that she keeps destroying everything I make. She put on the sad face, saying she won't bother with me and my sweets anymore. So last weekend, we were visiting my grandma, her sister too, and I made a fruit tart and a cheesecake. I put them in the fridge and warned my mom to not touch it. When we arrived, we opened the cheesecake and apparently she had put chocolate syrup all over it and the box and cheesecake itself was an ugly mess. At that point, I had a breakdown and started yelling at her and crying saying, why do you keep destroying my work? I'm so fed up with you. She kept pushing it off saying, it's not beautiful enough and it needed a better picture. On the way home, I wasn't talking to her and she started yelling at me saying that I was a jerk in front of everyone and I need to learn manners. Looking back, I could have handled the situation better, but I lost my mind. On the other hand though, I don't want anyone to touch my creations. Am I the jerk for yelling at my mom in front of everyone? Edit. Thanks for your advice. I know my behavior wasn't right and I feel sorry. I tried apologizing and I pointed out very calmly my problem. Again, she just brushed me off. I sadly don't have much money from my work, so I can't move out, but I'd surely buy a small fridge. Someone said I should take my result pics before my mom destroys them, which is another story that happened. I was once hired for a baptism. The man and I agreed on something after showing him what I could make. After making the sweets, again, I took pictures of it too. My mom took my pastry cream I had left over for something else. She remade the sweet the way that she wanted. The man sadly didn't have a fridge, so he asked for a sweet that didn't need to be refrigerated. My mom took the pastry cream and added cream and made it all blue. The man's kid is a daughter, by the way. I'm really a relaxed person. I'm fine if you come and try to give me advice on something, but don't do it without asking me first. I understand it was completely wrong of me to yell at her in front of everyone, and in the past, I have expressed how much I don't like what she's doing. Another example. The rose cake I made, instead of roses, she wanted to add sprinkles all over the cake instead of the flowers. When I added the roses, she wanted to add red circles all over it. She does this on purpose. It's a power thing. It's not going to change ever. Move out. Not the jerk. Start a new Instagram of food my mother ruined. Not the jerk. People saying you are the jerk or everyone sucks here are missing just how infuriating it is to have your work destroyed over and over by someone who knows exactly what they're doing. This isn't a one-off incident or a mistake, but a pattern of behavior. Of course you're going to be upset. I also do a lot of baking and I know how time-consuming these projects are. Your mother is deliberately sabotaging them, then turning around and trying to make you look like the bad guy when you get understandably upset. Would I be the jerk for dropping out of a wedding when it's two weeks away? I'm 29 male and I have a longtime girlfriend of three years, Hannah. My friend Kyle is getting married later this year. I agreed to be a groomsman, so it's me, him, and three other dudes. I was disappointed when I found out I wouldn't have a plus one for the wedding, but at the time, I thought the same went for the other guys. Come to find out, last weekend, that the three other groomsmen do have plus ones. Two of them have been in relationships for less time combined than me. The other guy is single and was complaining about not finding a date to bring on Tinder. This is how I found out. I asked Kyle what's going on. Why do they have plus ones, but I can't bring Hannah? This is what I found out. So I'm walking down the aisle with the bride's sister, Lisa. Lisa is developmentally disabled. She's in her 20s, but mentally she's about 10. Kyle says it's because they don't want to upset Lisa. Her parents figure she will never marry or have a boyfriend, so they want me to come solo to give Lisa the impression that I'm single. Basically, they want me to be a pretend boyfriend for Lisa. If I come with Hannah, that will make her jealous. I'm really not comfortable with this. Lisa is a nice girl, but I don't like that I'm tricking her into thinking I'm someone that I'm not. It's scummy to make someone believe I'm her boyfriend when I'm not. Plus, what if Lisa meets Hannah in the future and finds out we're together? She's already gotten into trouble in her adult care group for fighting with another girl over a guy. I told Kyle and his fiancée Claire that I'm not okay with this. 
They told me I need to suck it up for a day because this will mean a lot to Lisa. I'm not comfortable playing pretend boyfriend, especially for someone who thinks we are the real deal. I want to drop out at this point. The wedding is two weeks away. Would I be the jerk? Edit. You guys are right. This is really messed up. I called Kyle just now and told him we need to talk face to face. I'll update if something happens. Edit. I'm about to confront Kyle. Pray for me. I'm going to need some time to calm down. My friendship with Kyle is over. And whoever said that I got roped in because Lisa has a crush on me, you win. I'll fill you in when I've had a moment. I feel sick right now. I think I can say what happened earlier this evening. The more I read everyone's answers, the more I realized how messed up this was. I already had a feeling that this whole Lisa wedding date situation was messed up, but reading all of your comments reinforced it. I told Kyle that we had to talk and he agreed. We met at his house. Claire was there. Lisa wasn't. Thank God. Basically, I told them I was dropping out of the wedding. I told them that setting me up as Lisa's fake boyfriend was beyond messed up. What did they think was going to happen after the wedding? Was I supposed to continue the charade or dump her, break her heart and be the bad guy? Claire tried to explain what was happening. Something about how Lisa was upset and angry that she wasn't the one getting married. That wasn't the part that upset me. No, want to know how I got upset? It was because Lisa loves K-pop and is obsessed with Asian guys. I'm Japanese American, so that's why I got roped into being her fake date and not my single friend who has to rely on Tinder to find someone. It's all some sick attempt at making Lisa feel better by hooking her up with the only Asian guy they know. At that point, I had had enough. I told Kyle and Claire that it was over. I wasn't going to the wedding. I never wanted to speak to or see them again. There was a lot of screaming and crying, and Claire asked me why I would do this to her sister. I barely even know Lisa except for the few times that were wedding related. And that's where things stand. I don't know if they're going to try and paint me as the bad guy who broke Lisa's heart. I already told the guys that I'm not coming and why. Who knows what the fallout from this will be. I spent the rest of the night trying to get a grip on myself. I still feel kind of queasy from this whole thing. This feels like one sick joke. I feel bad for Lisa because while I got out, she's still stuck with that crappy family. I think I'm going to spend Saturday trying to put this all behind me with beer and a Brooklyn 99 marathon. Thank you guys for your help. At least I know there are people out there who also think this is a terrible idea. Oh, I also asked why not hook up Lisa with Tucker, the single friend using Tinder. It's because she said he was too ugly and hated his beard. I'm not going to tell Tucker that. He's going to find out eventually. Am I the jerk for not telling my dad that my mom got married? I'm 17 female and my parents got divorced when I was 12 because my dad had a two year long affair with my mom's best friend. It was really shameful because mom's best friend was with her since they were three. My mom had been pressured by my dad's family that she forgives him, but instead mom decided to divorce him. A lot of the family members actually stopped talking to mom because of this and some of her friends also took her BFF side. For this reason, mom was very devastated. Over the years, she has been to two different therapists for these issues she's had. As for my dad, he dated mom's best friend for a while before they broke up. This is when my dad realized he loved mom and tried everything to get her back, but my mom was stubborn and shut him out. He was still on and off again with Sylvia, mom's best friend. I had to be in this mess, especially with my dad who would always try to guilt trip me into convincing mom into being with him. I've heard him say things like, I wish we were family together. It was just a mistake. I'm willing to do anything to make amends. I want us to be a family again, but your mom doesn't want to. I'd had enough of it. So when I was 15, I decided to stay with mom and only visit dad on weekends because I can't handle his constant nagging. Also because during that time, my mom started dating, Jack, who was the father of my classmate. My dad found out and started asking a lot of questions about Jack. He wanted me to spy on Jack, but I had enough of it. I strictly told him if he doesn't stop this nonsense, I would cut him off completely. A few months ago, my mom announced that she will be marrying Jack within a few days. They got engaged that day and only wanted a small ceremony with just a few family members. It was a small gathering of only 15 people, just me and Jack's son, along with some close family and friends. The wedding happened in Jack's backyard. They had a photographer too, but my mom only recently posted the pictures after coming back from her honeymoon. My dad had no idea because my mom didn't want him to know anything. She was afraid my dad would create drama and cause a scene. I respected her wishes. 
My dad saw the photos and called me to confirm. I said, yes, mom got married a few months ago. My dad was angry. He called me a traitor and said that I was a jerk for keeping it from him. He has the right to know which man my mom was marrying. This was the last straw for me. I told him to buzz off. He's lost all rights over mom the moment he decided to go hook up with Sylvia. My mom knew he was an unhinged person, so I'm glad she didn't tell him. I also told him to leave us alone and I cut the phone. My mom also got messages from him. I read some of them. They were mostly of him accusing her of breaking up our family. I remind you again that he's dating Sylvia. I heard from my cousins that my dad has started to act abnormal ever since. I'm wondering if I went too far with it. More info on Sylvia. What hurts the most is that Sylvia was my mom's maid of honor. She's delusional because she thinks my dad is somehow the prize. That's why after all these years she stuck around, even people from my dad's family hate her. As for Sylvia and my dad's relationship plans, I honestly feel no pity for her. Dad is a scumbag who only goes back to her every time my mom rejects him. Once he's bored, they fight. He or she cheats and then break up, but they never block each other. I'm literally tired of this mess. If it wasn't for the court orders, I would have cut them off completely. I hope I can next year when I turn 18. Update. So, something weird happened. A few days ago, Sylvia came to my mom's house. I was there. She was shouting at my mom and said that she's stealing her man, my dad, away from her. She literally said, You already had your fun with him. Why can't you just leave him alone? My mom told her to get lost. Sylvia went on a rant about how much she's better than my mom and even threatened that she would hook up with her new husband as well. My mom told her that if that ever happens, she will be doing her a favor by taking the trash out, and she trusts Jack would never hurt her. My mom threatened to call the police on Sylvia, and that eventually made her leave the property. As much as I hate the drama, I must say watching that wretched woman have a meltdown because my dad was still hung up on my mom is precious. Apparently, dad dumped Sylvia again and hopes that mom would see that he is dedicated to win her back. Who knows how long it will last. My dad also got into a fight with a random person in a bar because he was drunk. I guess he's still coping with the feeling that mom is not going to be with him anymore. Thank God the guy didn't press charges. I had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him, at least I tried to. I asked him if he's so in love with mom, why did he cheat? His answers were illogical. He said that as a man, it's hard to control himself. At that time, Sylvia was flirting with him and he took a shot. He knows it's wrong. He thought it would be a one-time thing and then he would dump her, but it went on for a long time. He said I won't understand it because I'm not a man, and that they can cheat but still love their wife and would even give their life for her. He loves my mom, but he still has urges to be with other women. This conversation was going nowhere. I didn't ask much. I just told him I hope his son-in-law treats me the way he treated my mom. He never gave an answer to that. I still can't believe he would to this day think he's the victim. Anyways, I'm thinking about moving in with mom permanently. I know Sylvia would come by his house now. Can anyone please help me understand what he means? Because I always thought you cheat because you don't love that person. Maybe I am wrong in some way. Just pick it off, sweetie. This actually happened many years ago now, but I was dining in a restaurant with friends around 9-ish in the evening. Not a fancy restaurant by any means, but an affordable, delicious option that's always open late. It wasn't busy, and there was one very bored waitress who looked to be about in her 40s. She put on a perky face and took our orders. Being a picky eater, I asked for a burger with no lettuce or tomato. I had ordered the exact same thing dozens of times before with no real issues, but something was off about this waitress. It comes with the lettuce and tomato, honey, she said, like I was stupid. Yeah, I laughed, thinking she was just teasing me at first. I just want the cheese, though. It just comes like that. That's how we make it, with lettuce and tomato, she said in a matter-of-fact way. I looked at my friends for some sort of help and only received dumbfounded looks from them. Um, I said as nicely as I could. Would you just leave the lettuce and tomato off? I was waiting for her to understand, but she acted like I was speaking nonsense. Sorry, but that's just how we make it, she replied, clearly annoyed now. But if you don't like it, just pick it off, sweetie. She finished taking our orders while I sat there, stunned. Picking off lettuce and tomato is easy, sure, but on rare occasions that this restaurant had forgotten to leave it off for me in the past, it usually left the bun soggy and tasting like the toppings that I disliked, hence why I asked for it not to be assembled that way. And I did everything I could, in my very confused state of mind, to be polite with this woman, 
especially because I started to wonder if she was, one, on something, two, trying to flirt with me to win a bet, or three, profoundly stupid. I did end up receiving a burger with lettuce and tomato. Surprise, surprise, and the bun was soaked by the questionable-looking piled-on tomatoes. It even looked like they had even managed to add more toppings than usual, and I wondered what I could have ever done to this strange waitress to make her mess with my burger like that. Did I hurt her in a past life? I asked if I could at least get a fresh burger bun because it was so watery, and she just looked at me exasperated and said, This again, just pick it off, it's fine. I never made a scene, I never asked to speak to a manager, and I ate my fries and the parts of the burger that I liked. I honestly don't really like confrontation, but I did get a bit of petty revenge in the end. On the table, I left her the oldest, dirtiest $1 bill from my friend's wallet as a tip, because you should always tip your servers. But I put the lettuce and tomato on top of that nasty dollar bill with a note saying, Just pick it off, sweetie. I wish I could have seen her face. Edit to add a few things. The always tip your servers bit was supposed to be in a mocking tone, since that's what people say. I didn't convey that well enough, so I wanted to clarify that I'm aware that you don't always have to tip. For those of you saying I shouldn't have tipped her at all, how else was I supposed to leave the toppings for her? That dollar wasn't a loss. It had been in my friend's wallet for over a year, and it was so soft and deteriorated, I doubt many establishments would have even accepted it as a payment, especially after being soaked in tomato. I really hope it was bad enough that she had to make a special trip to the bank to replace it. 3. For those of you calling me names or referring to me as too soft or whatever because I didn't stand up for myself in a really bizarre situation that confused me, this was almost a decade ago and I was much more anxious and shy back then. I was in my early 20s at the time and working through some issues, blah blah blah. You don't really need to know my childhood story, but I did my best then. And these days, I'll gladly tell you to buzz off for being rude or calling me names, online or in person. I mean, is it some sort of weird power play for those of you calling out a presumably skittish person rude names? That's messed up. I found my boss's highly critical notes about a coworker. After 10 years of working together, my direct manager, our director of operations, Jessica, was let go from our company a few months ago. There were apparently some behind the scenes issues between herself and our CEO, Bruce. He alluded as much to me and others in conversation, I think in an attempt as transparency that led to this result. Bruce had the replacement for Jessica set to start less than a week after Jessica was let go. She was let go on a Tuesday. My new manager, Elizabeth, started the following Monday, which leads me to believe that this change was in the works for well over a month due to the notice Elizabeth would have had to have given at her previous job. I don't know if I can communicate how sudden Jessica's termination was. It was a surprise to everyone, but especially to Lila, who is one of Jessica's best friends and who works as a manager. When Elizabeth first started, one of the tasks at the top of her list was meeting with the managers and department heads to get a feel for the organization. But the meeting with Lila took place after hours and from what I heard of it, it was not polite or professionally handled. I work after usual business hours and the doors to my office and the conference room were both open. Elizabeth and Bruce were both quite aggressive towards Lila. Thankfully, another manager, Mandy, was also in the meeting and was able to give Lila a little support and a chance to take a breath. The meeting eventually seemed to calm down and I closed my door once I realized what I was hearing. And I've chalked that up to Elizabeth being primed by others, possibly Bruce, to take a defensive position due to Lila's close friendship with Jessica. This is my conundrum. I went to our communal supply closet last evening to get some notepads. There weren't any fresh new ones, but I was looking for scratch paper for myself and don't mind using up the dregs of someone else's old notepad. I grabbed a few remnants and went back to my desk. When sorting through the notepads quickly to clean up any loose pieces, I noticed that one had writing on the second page down. I flipped the page up, intending to remove and shred whatever notes were on there. The notes that I saw were Elizabeth's notes from, or possibly after, that first meeting with Lila. I'm sure I won't shock you by telling you that the notes, at a glance, once I realized what they were, were not flattering to Lila in the least. Some pertained to her work performance, but others were very crude and inaccurate assessments of Lila's personality and what Elizabeth did not like about her. There was also a page after those notes with some jotted down info from a high-level meeting that Elizabeth attended, again at a quick glance. I don't know what to do now. Should I pretend I never saw the notes, shred them, and keep my mouth shut? Should I take the notepad to Elizabeth and explain how I ended up with it, allowing her to destroy the notes herself? I could even play it more as, 
Funny thing, I grabbed this old notepad from the supply closet and it looks like you still have some notes on here. Did you want to check them to see if you still need them? But of course, she will want to know if I saw what the notes were about. It's very fortunate that I was the one who came across this information as I work at the manager level with clearance and responsibilities to match and previously did HR type work for the company. I suppose my biggest issue here is wondering, if Elizabeth made notes like that about Lila, what kind of notes did she make about me after our first encounter? I can't ask her that, but I worry that bringing up the Lila notes to Elizabeth will cause her to mistrust me. To be very clear, I have no intention of telling Lila or anyone else about what I saw. Elizabeth and Lila seem to have evened out a bit and their relationship is maybe not the best in the world, but it's certainly better than when Elizabeth first started. I don't want to cause issues or drama, I just want a good working relationship with my new boss. Update. We don't have HR, and the only members of the company above me in the hierarchy at the time were Elizabeth and Bruce. I felt a lack of ownership when it came to drawing attention to the situation or deciding what the correct course of action would be. My final determination was to seek out the counsel of Amy, Bruce's executive assistant, who had been in charge of cleaning out Jessica's office. When I showed the notes to Amy, she instantly made the decision to shred them. We have a third-party company who shreds our documents and those are kept in secure lock boxes until picked up. I also left it to Amy to decide whether to inform Elizabeth about the situation. As far as I know, she didn't. I had also gone through the cabinet to make sure no other notepads had any written pages on them and I found one notepad with Jessica's notes from a common meeting a few years prior, so I shredded those. General updates on everyone involved. Elizabeth is no longer with our company. She gave notice about six months in citing the not great fit on both sides, as well as an opportunity she could not pass up. Elizabeth remains a mixed bag in my opinion. Before she left the company, she ensured that I received a review and a raise, after not having a review for over three years. However, there were some professionalism problems evident. For example, Elizabeth and I were having a very serious one-on-one -on -one discussion, and while I was talking, she reached into her drawer, pulled out her floss, and proceeded to floss her teeth. I was stunned and I assume I stopped speaking because she gestured for me to continue. I asked if she needed me to come back and she replied that no, it was fine and flossed all of her teeth. Not in an excuse me, this popcorn kernel is stuck sort of way. It was with both hands in her mouth, just sawing away at her gums. At that point, I think she had already mentally checked out. Our serious discussion was about something she had done without thinking and I was doing my best trying to minimize the fallout. The real benefit of Elizabeth is Regina who Elizabeth hired prior to leaving. Bruce promoted Regina into the role Elizabeth had vacated and we are all delighted to work with Regina. Bruce is still Bruce. After Elizabeth left, he went around seeking guidance on what had gone wrong. He has a history of taking resignations a little too personally, but I honestly think that the situation worked out as best it could. Elizabeth was a rebound in a sense and while I did not wish such a short tenure on her, Regina was able to step into the role without the crushing weight of constantly being compared to Jessica. As far as I know, Jessica is doing well in her new job. The same for Lila. Lila, the unknowingly recipient of this vitriol, found a great job elsewhere and from all accounts is thriving. Lila's last day was close to Elizabeth's and, while I think Lila might have stayed with Elizabeth gone, her new work environment sounds much healthier for her and the work well suited to her skill set along with the lack of baggage she still had here as Jessica's close friend. No room? But I paid my deposit. This tale comes from when I was working night audit in a busy hotel on the outskirts of a small city about eight years ago. It's a sold out night. I have one room left with one check-in, marked with a late arrival flag, so we know the guest is arriving after 2 a.m. and late shift have already spoken to the guest. Overbooking off and our local ring round also verifies that the area is sold out too. This is going to be a perfect fill, so I'm happy and my night porter is cracking on with the rounds. It's 2.15 a.m. and I'm just about to run the night on it when in walks Karen. She states her name, slaps down a credit card, and asks to be checked in quickly. Immediately, alarm bells are ringing as it's not the name on the last arrival I have on the list. I ask her the normal questions. 1. Is your reservation booked under another name? 2. Do you have your booking confirmation in hand? She looks at me as if I'd suddenly grown an extra head, asks if I'm stupid, and pushes her credit card further towards me across the desk. Me. I'm really sorry, madam, but I don't have a record of your reservation for tonight, and the hotel is sold out. If you don't have a confirmation number to hand me, I can't check you in, as I don't see a verified reservation for you. Karen. 
I have a booking. It's been made months ago and I paid a deposit. I just want to be checked in. Me. Okay, let me run your card and see if I can find any payments. Was this the card that you prepaid your booking with? She rolls her eyes. I run the card. Sorry, madam, but I'm not finding any payments associated with this card for previous or upcoming reservations. Are you sure your booking is for this hotel? As there are two other hotels of the same brand with similar names in the city. Karen. I always stay here. The reception manager knows me and takes care of my bookings personally. Me. Madam, I am the FOM, and I believe that this is the first time I'm making your acquaintance. And when I pull your information up, I'm not seeing any data, which means you haven't had a reservation with us in the past three years. Are you sure you've booked in this specific location? This interaction is continued back and forth for almost 25 minutes, and her attitude is nonchalant with the occasional eye rolls, huffs, and puffs. She's texting the entire time. By this time, I've accessed the chain's dreadful central reservation system and searched other local properties, which are showing she doesn't have any bookings there. The last arrival has also turned up with her kid in tow and is sat in our lobby sofa watching the entertainment. I've already paged my porter to discreetly check in the waiting guest so not as to antagonize Karen who is scarily quiet and I'm just waiting for her to explode. Finally, she slams her entire purse down on the counter and exclaims my stupidity. She claims to have paid a 50% deposit, that the reception manager always handles her reservations personally and that I'm a complete and total moron. By this time, the other guest comes back down for a smoke and is laughing watching this crazy person just lose it. I let her melt down entirely and when she's run out of steam, I suggest that I can book her a room at the only available hotel in a 20 mile radius. However, as she doesn't have a valid booking with me, she would need to pay the rate at the hotel direct and then contact us with her proof of booking and I assured her that she will get a free refund and a comp week booking with spa treatments if she has the proof of reservation and I'm wrong. Off she eventually toddles to the waiting BMW that's been idling in the entire time she's there. I make the reservation for her at the new hotel and write out a brief handover log. In walks the late arrival guest who's been smoking and enjoying the free entertainment. She slaps down a brand new 20 pack of Marlboros, winks at me and says, looks like you need these, pats me on the arm and heads off to bed. I was off for the next two days, came back and caught up with the GM. Apparently, she never arrived at the booked out hotel, didn't come back to us, and no one knows who she is. It still baffles me to this day what her game plan was and where she went. Am I the jerk for not letting my friends stay over at my house when they travel to visit and refusing to pay for their hotel? I, 25 female, have friends, a couple that moved a while back to another state because of college and decided to stay there even after graduating. We keep contact via texting and video calls but we've never seen each other face to face since they moved. They decided to travel to the city I live in so we can spend time together. We had all chosen a lot of things to do in the two weeks they're supposed to spend here. The conflict is that I don't want them to stay at my apartment, like sleep here overnight while they're here, but they don't have family or other friends in this state or close by that they can stay with, which means they'd have to pay for a hotel. A day ago when they arrived, we were talking and I asked them which hotel they picked. They were confused and Anna, who's 26, asked what I meant. They thought they were going to stay at my apartment with me. We hadn't discussed where they would stay before they came here and I assumed they knew that they were going to stay at a hotel since they have never stayed at my home like that and they know I don't let anyone stay over like that. Not even my parents or my boyfriend. They said they thought I had changed my mind about these things but I never said I had. They just assumed I did. I live in an apartment alone and even though there isn't a guest room, I have my old mattress that I could put on the living room or in my hobbies room or they could sleep on the couch, but I refuse to do so or to help pay for the hotel. They're both very annoyed with me and think I'm being selfish, but James, who's 25, is furious. He thinks I'm being ridiculous. Anna accepted to pay, but James wants to either go back or make me let them stay in my apartment. They're staying at a hotel at the moment and we didn't do what we planned to yesterday. Anna texted me that she's trying to convince James to stay in the hotel and maybe she will, but nonetheless, they both think I should change my mind. The reason I don't want them or anyone to stay over is because it makes me very uncomfortable to have anyone in my home while I'm asleep or not there. I hate the idea of someone messing with my things without my permission or seeing something I'd rather they not see or even stealing something and they know that, but they thought I'd become more lenient about it. I asked my parents and other friends what they think 
and the general consensus is that it would be nice of me to let them stay, but since I am known to be quite neurotic between our friends and family, and it's not like I told them I changed my view, nor implied they could stay, I wouldn't be in the wrong if I don't allow it. Not the jerk. Who expects to just come crash at someone's house for two weeks? Who plans a trip without having accommodations 100% squared away? Everyone sucks here. I'm amazed an adult would go on a two-week trip without confirming arrangements. This is not something that should be assumed. That's nutty behavior indeed. But if you suspected they might want to stay at yours, you should have asked the hotel question before they arrived. I find it nearly improbable that you made all these plans and never had a clue that they figured they would stay at yours. That said, if someone travels to see me, I always offer to pay for or split the cost of a hotel when I've lived in a smaller space, especially if I was the one who invited them out. At the very least, I treat them to a nice dinner on me. I mean, do you know how much it's going to cost them to book two weeks of hotel last minute? You're kind of a crappy host, and I would probably go home and not visit you again if you did this to me. But it wouldn't happen, because I would have asked if I could have stayed with you. Huge shout out to our newest official channel member, Cash Josh Games. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Support our channel by joining as a member today, and we'll give you a shout out in our next video. Or come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.